Okay, today I'm going to do an overview and unboxing of the Turnigee XSL 6 charger. So when you open up the box, you get a charging unit and some cables. So first of all, let's go through the cables that you get. You get a power port connector. This is for your input power, and it's got a couple alligator clips attached to it. That connects to your power supply. And it comes with uh, XT60 with alligator clips and XT60 with banana plugs for your output power to your batteries. Um, I don't use XT60, so I'll probably make a couple, turn these into a couple of Dean's connectors, but if you get XT60, that works great. Okay, so let's get into looking at the charger itself. So the uh, charger can do uh, lithium polymer, 1-6 cells, nickel metal hydride, NICAD, and lead acid batteries. In the LiPo, it can do 1-6 cells, and the charging ports are on the side between, uh, has a, can balance between a 2 and a 6S battery. On the side, we have our output power that uh, has banana plug connectors to our battery. On the other side, we have our input power, which is where our input power connector connects to. And then it has a um, little port here on the side that takes like a Futaba type connector that connects either a temperature monitor sensor, which is optional, we have to buy extra, a little temperature sensor for um, putting on either NICADs or nickel metal hydride batteries. And, or you could use this little guy right here, which comes in a software pack for using the charge monitor program that connects the USB to your computer to graph your uh, voltages and um, current while you're charging. Okay, so that's the basic parts of the charger. It has four buttons on top with a little fan that, that keeps it cool. So, um, very cool little charger, and let's power it on and see how it works. Just take the power, put it on the side. It takes between 11 and 18 volts input power. Let's connect our charger leads to the side here. Banana plugs. There we go there. Okay. So first of all, when you turn it on, we're going to have to go through and do initial setup. And for initial setup, I'm going to turn down some of these lights so you can see a little bit better. And we're going to zoom it in a little bit. Just a little bit there so you can see better. Okay, so now first of all, the thing we're going to do, we're going to go through, we're going to go through and do our program setup. So you hit this button right here, which is type, you've got four buttons, type, status, plus and minus, and start and enter. So we're going to hit the type button. We're going to keep hitting this button until it cycles through and goes down to user program set. We're going to hit enter. So you've got uh, different types of uh, lithium batteries that you can program. So we're going to hit start here, and this goes between lithium polymer, 3.7 volts, lithium ion, which is the 3.6 volt variation, lithium ion phosphate. 3.3 volts, that's like A123 type batteries, and then back to LiPo. I mostly use LiPo, so we're going to hit enter there. And then we hit the down arrow. This is input voltage cutoff. This is where the charge will stop working if its voltage goes below 10 volts. You can change that up or down. Key buzzers, this is just the, the, the beeping when you hit the but buttons. This is capacity cutoff. How much Capacity, um, the charge will shut off after this amount of capacity is reached. This is the safety feature. Safety timer, again, another safety feature. You can program that up or down depending on um, how much, when you want the charger to shut off. Waste time, this is just the amount of time in between cycles. So if you're cycling at like a NICAP battery, just uh, 20 minutes would just be the amount of time for it to cool off in between cycles. USB temperature select, so this is to where you'd either use your temperature select uh, temperature monitor with your probe. Right now I have it set for 60 degrees centigrade. Um, you can change this setting by hitting enter, hitting enter again, and then you can change up or down your sensor, or you can hit enter again, and this changes it to be able to enable or disable the USB connector if you're using this little guy for the charge monitor program. But we're going to go back to temperature sensor, 
hit enter, enter, and you hit the down arrow key to get to the next menu. NICAD sensitivity, you can change that there. Nickel metal hydrate sensitivity, you can change that there. This is the uh, check time. This is the amount of time that goes by when the charger uh, interrupts the charge cycle for just a second and checks the battery voltage types and makes sure that it is correct. It's just another safety feature. If you're using the charge monitor program, you'll see a little blip this amount of time into the graph where it has uh, interrupted the charge just to check to make sure the cell, cell uh, number matches what you inputted. Just another safety feature. Down, and we're back to LiPo again. Okay, good. So that's basically how to do the user setup. Um, once you get your user set up, you can select the battery type that you like. Let's say, for instance, we're going to go do a LiPo battery. Just select the rental LiPo. Hit start. Okay. So we're going to plug in our battery. So we try to take our my Dean's connector here, and we're going to plug that into my battery here. And then we're going to plug my balance port directly into my balance lead directly into that 3S balance port right there because I'm doing it's a 4,000 milliamp uh, 3S battery that we're charging. Got that plugged in the side. So now the first thing we can go through is in charging a LiPo or the different um, LiPo uh, profiles that you can charge. You can just do a straight LiPo charge. You can do LiPo discharge. LiPo storage, which prepares the battery if you're going to store it for a while. LiPo fast charge, it just shortens up the charge profile a little bit and gets you be able to use your battery a little bit faster. LiPo balance, which is what I do all the time. I always like to keep my cells balanced, so I'm going to stop there at LiPo balance. Hit enter. So it's at 4 amps right now, so I'm going to use the upper change that up or down right there, hit enter. You can change the amount of voltage. Right now it's a 3S, but you can change that up or down. It goes up to 6S. And in balance, obviously it only goes down to 2S because uh, obviously you don't need to balance a 1S battery. You would just use standard charge. So we're going to go to 3S, enter. Okay, once we're all connected and we have our battery connected, balance lead connected, we can push and hold enter. And it comes up this battery check. It's just checking. It's saying it's it's recognizing a 3S battery. We put in 3S battery. Make sure they match. Confirm to enter. And it begins to charge. Okay, so it's saying it's a lithium 3S battery. Right now it's at 4 amps. It is 11.46 volts right now. It's balanced charging. 12 seconds have gone by and it's 15 milliamps have been input into the battery. The information you can see while you're charging, you hit the down arrow key right here. And end voltage, that's what it's programmed to be, it's end voltage. Capacity cutoff, safety timer. This is the temperature cutoff. Right now it's displaying the external temperature, which we don't have a monitor connected, so it's not there. Input voltage tells us what our uh, power supply is giving us. And back to end voltage again. Now to see what's going on with the actual battery while we're charging, we use the plus key. And the plus key will show us our individual cell voltages. Right now we're just showing three, three cells right now, but it will show up to the six cells right there. You hit that again, and it goes back to your um, standard battery information that's going to display while it's charging. And so that's the charge of a lithium polymer battery. So we're just going to hit stop right here. Sorry, stop, and that stops our charge. And we're going to go through and switch to a NICAT battery. So we're just going to disconnect that, disconnect that, just so I can show you how the temperature monitor works. So we just got a little NICAT battery here, and we're going to connect that up to our Dean's connector. Okay. And we are going to go to about, hit this uh, type button again. We're going to get around to where it says NICAD. We're going to hit enter. Okay, so it gives us a NICAD charge. And there's only um, um, NICAD charge, NICAD discharge. 
um, are your profiles and then cycle. This You can punch in the number of cycles you want to cycle the battery right here and make sure you have your waste time set correctly for, your, for the number of cycles that you can do. I believe it can do up to five cycles. So we're going to go back around to charge and right now we hit enter and right now it's set for 3 amp current which is good. You can change that up or down by going there. Charge 3 amps. Now the one thing we're going to try to do here with this, with this uh, if we're going to use the little temperature sensor right here, what this does, this actually just goes and has a little magnet and it just connects to the side of the battery. Oops, just kind of see it, kind of sticks right on there. And we're going to go to the side of the charger here. We're going to plug that into our little Futabo plug right there. Okay. And so now we're connected and ready to go. We have our input into the charger, output up to the battery, and we have our temperature sensor connected. We push and hold enter. Battery check, and it starts charging. Tells us our NICAD we're charging, 2.8 amps. Right now it's at 10.3 volts. Charging at uh, 12 seconds of our 9, 10 milliamps. Um, we can go through the same things we could go through before as far as information while we were while we're charging. Right now it says is external temperature of 24 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat that up. And uh, you'll see it charge has changed here. So we're going to hit this. And now it's at 26, 27, 28, 29. You see it's going up. I'm just going to hold that on there until and you get the point. If it got to 60 degrees, it would uh, the alarm would go off. And it would, uh, an alarm. Just put it up there. See how she does. 55. 55. 55. 55. And there it goes. stops our charge but that's how the temperature um, sensor works for a NICAP battery or maybe a nickel metal hydrate battery just another safety feature for while you're charging and that's hard to charge a NICAP battery overall this is a great little charger I think it's about uh, $20 or Hobby King so I'm at 23 or 24 dollars or Hobby King I got this from the US warehouse so it didn't take a long time to get it um, if you just want a small charger you can carry around with you or if you're just getting into the hobby and don't want to spend a lot of money just want to get a good charger that uh, has a lot of capabilities for a small amount of money um, the only thing you may need to do is you may need to get some charger plugs that will work with your batteries you can either buy these at the hobby store your local hobby shop or make them yourself with the connectors that match your batteries or if you get XT60s, you can use the ones that come in the kit. So that's the uh, Turnigy EcuCell 6 charger. And uh, give it a try and see how it is.